Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watch You Want, and thanks for logging on. Today we're looking at the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore. As you've rarely seen it, this model with stainless steel case, stainless steel bezel, and matching stainless steel bracelet is in many ways a missing link model between the original 1972 Gerald Genta Audemars Piguet Royal Oak, the first sports watch to incorporate stainless steel, integrated bracelet, and precious metal price, and the 1993 Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore designed by Emmanuel Geit, the first aggressive, oversized sports watch of the modern era, designed in the style of the Royal Oak, but in the spirit of that original Royal Oak, also breaking with tradition and becoming an iconoclast in its own right. However, that 93 to present offshore is more commonly seen on a hornback alligator strap, a calfskin leather strap on older models, or a rubber strap. To see one on a full bracelet in the style of the original 72 to present Royal Oak is a little bit of a shock at first because it changes the look of the watch. However, I feel it changes it for the better. Better, integrating the look of the case and the bracelet brings back a little bit of that Gerald Genta design vision that the watch should read all as a piece, not so much as a watch with a strap or a bracelet, but in the tradition of Genta's pedigree as a jewelry designer, more as a continuous unbroken bracelet, an integrated styling statement. Now, on the wrist, you can see the already burly 42 millimeter Royal Oak Offshore gains an extra dimension of presence with that bracelet. I'm going to add that the bracelet does more than add presence and integration. It adds nice balance to the watch because the weight of the bracelet, especially in combination with this double deployant clamshell clasp down here, it balances the watch on the wrist. So if you don't like the feeling of a top heavy sports watch, but you like the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore, getting one on a bracelet is an excellent choice. Now you can see the watch at about 16 millimeters thick rides high on the wrist. That's to the detriment of any long sleeves or dress cuffs you may want to wear over the watch, but it's to the benefit of the construction. Always expressive of its status as a machine, it took the already mechanical industrial aesthetic of Genta's design and elevated it to the next level. The Offshore takes the bezel gasket, only visible as a sliver of material on the original Royal Oak, and it creates a distinct aesthetic layer in its own right. It becomes very much part of the profile of the watch, and you can see that right here. It fits. Honestly, you have that alternating case in white metal, the black of the bezel gasket, and then again, the white polished flanks of that octagonal bezel. And on a watch this big and this bold, the expressed material really works in sort of a, a ball house, you know, form follows function type of aesthetic. Now, speaking of form and function, I do want to get to the bracelet before I dive into the bezel and the dial of the watch. These are hand-finished bracelets. This is not just a chunk of metal. This is something that is as lovingly finished and requires as much, if not more, attention to detail than the beveled, multifaceted, doubly finished, polished and brushed case and bezel because these bracelets are functional elements of art. In addition to making the taper, the beveling of the shoulder of each center link, in addition to making the watch feel beautiful on the wrist, it has to feel fluid. There's a ergonomic art to creating these bracelets that adds tremendous value. Not only do you have on each separate link the requirement that the tolerances be precise and yet it also be flexible, but you have the bottom sections which feature an even higher degree of polish and between them, in, in between each one of these crevices, there's additional matte finished beveling designed to prevent it from pulling hairs and closing off on your skin. So not only are you looking at something that's beautiful, that's almost imperceptibly tapered from link to link and yet clearly tapered as a whole, not only are you looking at something that's beautiful, but you're beginning to realize why the Royal Oak and Royal Oak Offshore on the bracelet are considered to be the most difficult watches for professional refinishers to restore to factory specifications. The amount of handwork that goes just into creating this bevel on the edge is absolutely stunning. And the amount of work that goes into restoring it to factory specs, fortunately this one reads as virtually unworn, is staggering. The bracelet itself features an extremely robust double deployant. Now you can see this double deployant is not just beautifully built, it's also beautifully subtle. Now I like the double deployant because it's easier to fit than the single, 
the single can sometimes, a single deployment can sometimes pinch skin. It can sometimes be difficult to get a precise fit. But not only is this secure, but almost like the Rolex President bracelet, it, it has almost no profile to it. When viewed from the side, it's almost seamless with only the twin grips of the clamshell and the AP logo on this brushed center section to cue you as to where it actually joins. The clamshell is very secure and it closes with a satisfying snick. It opens the same way and each element of the double deployant, I'm going to open it up here, is very secure, very burly, very much all of a piece in keeping with the feel and the quality of the watch itself. And the quality continues on the dial. The dial and the bezel are really the heart and soul of every offshore. The bracelet is an unexpected grace on this one, but every offshore features this signature octagonal bezel. Another reference to Genta. Now we're looking at stainless steel bolts, this being an offshore. Diving in from the alternately polished bolts, brushed bezel, to the convex rayhot, we swoop down across the tachometer scale and get a sense of this gorgeous metallic mega tapisserie dial treatment. It is blue with contrasting silvered guilloche subregisters and white Arabic numerals all the way around. This is in many ways the classic image of the offshore dial. This is what many envision when they think Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore. And the, the level of detailing is spectacular. The tachometer not just aids in the transition from the bezel to the dial, but it cantilevers out slightly so you can see it's hanging almost as a circular awning around the circumference of that mega tapisserie dial. Now I say mega tapisserie because while both the Royal Oak and the Royal Offshore, fe Royal Oak Offshore feature that waffle cut on the dial, it is the bigger, broader individual rectangles with deeper, broader, and intricately detailed, there is a slight dot pattern within the channels, but it's that bigger detail that defines the offshore. And beyond that, it's still built the traditional way, on a pantograph machine, painstakingly created. These days they're created at Audemars Piguet, but these examples from the F-Series, and this is an F-Series serial number, were actually produced by Stern Creations. Yes, those Sterns. You've got a dial with a paddock parentage. So not only do you have the Audemars Piguet watch and bracelet with the Gerald Genta design pedigree, the added value of Emmanuel Geit's original 1993 Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Evolution, you've got that stern creation pedigree within the dial, and beneath it, Jeger Lecoultre and Dubois de Praz. Now traditionally, all Audemars Piguet Royal Oak offshores use the JLC 889 base movement, bidirectional auto winding, only about 3.6 millimeters thick, very fine, beautifully finished by Audemars Piguet to their in-house standards, and on top of that, a vertical clutch chronograph mechanism. I'll start that up. You can see how smooth it stops and starts. There is no jump. There is no stagger on the stop. And when you reset it, resets precisely. That's the advantage of a vertical clutch. As built by Dubois de Praz, you get that chronograph action that you associate with watches like the contemporary six-digit Rolex Daytona with its vertical clutch, or the Lampons powered by the famed Piguet 1185. But you also get that manufactured provenance of Jeger Lecoultre in the base movement. Long known as the watchmaker to Kings or the watchmaker's watchmaker, Jeger Lecoultre has built base movements for Audemars Piguet, Vacheron Constantin, and Patek Philippe. So that's the combination you're getting. You're getting everything from that original design parentage, the offshore evolution, Audemars Piguet's standards of fit, finish, and materials on the case, bracelet, the finish of the movement, stern creations in the dial, Dubois de Praz, kings of the complication, building the module for the chronograph, and Jeger Lecoultre building that base movement itself, shielded by an anti-magnetic soft iron Faraday cage, and finished to Audemars Piguet's exacting and uncompromising valet de jeu standards. This is as good as it gets. If you want an Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore that instantly reads as an offshore, but has a bit more shoulder, a bit more body, a bit more presence, and because of the bracelet, a bit more of an integrated look, you've absolutely got to take a look at this 42 millimeter stainless steel Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore with full bracelet on our website, Watch You Want.